Well, good morning, Foothills Church. How are you today? Oh, okay. Y'all did a little bit better than uh, nine o'clock, but let's try that one more time. How's everybody doing today? It is, isn't it a little bit crazy that we get to do this? Um, uh, I flew in from Texas uh, yesterday, which is where I live, uh, to just be with you guys today. But I was out in the foyer, and, um, and so the Jesus sign really got me. I kind of love Jesus. But anyway, um, I was like, dude, that's, and the doors were pretty incredible. And then, and then I turned around, and I saw the view. I, I was like, oh, my word. Like, I feel like heaven kind of came down and stuff like that. It was, it was incredible. Are you glad to be here today, yes or no? Yes, all right, it is Southern Sunday. And if you're not happy, we got pie that will fix that after this, all right? Uh, I've gotta be honest, this is the very first time ever been to a church where it was pie day. And I, I'm so giddy. I mean, I'm like, this is amazing. It's not the pie. I haven't had any. Okay. Uh, but wow, what, what an incredible place. And I'm honored to be here. My name is Ryan Fontenot and uh, I travel full time, uh, speaking to students primarily, but in churches and camps and, uh, get to do these Sunday morning gatherings. And it is an honor, uh, to be here with you today. And uh, I just feel like the person beside you needs needs to know that you are glad they are here. So would you give somebody some knuckles beside you and say, I'm so glad you're sitting by me. Would you just go ahead and, and do that right now? That's uh, so, somebody felt weird right now. Yeah, somebody was just like, I'm not. And now, now, you know, we're all glad that you are here. Well, as I said, I flew in yesterday. I actually flew in a little bit early. Um, I wasn't sure what I needed to do. I uh, never, never been here before. And so I was like, I'm going to get there early. Uh, any early people, by the way, like to show up early. Um, and you're probably some of you married to people that aren't, uh, don't point at them. I'm not trying to start a fight already. Uh, but, uh, I, I'm my, my wife's always like on time, uh, which means five minutes late for her. And, uh, uh, and I had a mentor that said, man, if you're five minutes early, you're late. And so that's kind of how I roll. But as I flew in yesterday, um, I had a lot of times like, I don't really know what I'm going to do. My wife asked me, hey, what, what are you going to do? So I was like, I don't know. I have a couple of buddies who um, are big like Tennessee fans um, and they're friends. OK, so I'm like guilty by association. And so um, and and they were like, bro, you need to go to the game. I pulled up to my hotel. I was like, man, I don't know if I want to get in the middle of all that, you know, and I pulled up to my hotel and there was these big blue charter buses out there and they said, Kentucky. I was like, I don't think so. Like, um, I was like, oh man, well, the team was in there doing their team meals and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, okay, this, I, I may have to go check this out. So I called my wife to make sure that was okay. I said, hey babe, um, cause I've been married for a minute. All right. And I know what to do guys. You learn, just ask. Okay. And uh, so I asked her, I was like, Hey, she goes, what are you going to do? I was like, well, I think I'm going to go to the, to the football game. I mean, like, like Tennessee's ranked like number three in the nation. And, uh, and, and she's like, is that a big deal? I'm like, yeah, it's a big deal. All right. And, um, and, and I was like, they have a good football team and they're playing some other team from another place. And, uh, and, and apparently they're decent too. I don't know. And so anyway, long story short, I was like, all right, well, I'm going to go down there. I don't know if I'm going to get in the game or not. I don't even know if this is what I want to do, but I'm going to go and hang out because they were like, man, you got to go see that. It's crazy. Like, and they're just hyping it up. And I'm like texting back and forth. And he's giving my, my buddy who lives in Texas now is dropping me pins on where to go and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, bro. Let's. And so I'm down there and I was like, this is, I mean, y'all crazy. Okay. This was, this is, I was like, okay, I feel it. So I'm like, oh man, I'm like asking about, Hey, you got a ticket? You know what? I'm just kidding. Um, so I got a ticket and, and, and I, and I went into the game and it was crazy. And while I was, I was down there, I was like, man, these people are really nice. So maybe they'll help me intro my sermon for tomorrow. And so I got my phone and I just went around to random people and I said, hey, I asked them a very simple question. And anyway, they wanted to help me intro my sermon today. So let's check out this video and see how they did.
There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So it was, I'm in, all right, I'm in. And, uh, uh, I, you know, as I was doing this, I was like, this could go awesome if they win. Uh, if not, I wasted my time because I will not show that. But, uh, man, what an incredible atmosphere, that first touchdown. I was like, ah! What? And I was like, man, it's loud. It's loud in this place. And, uh, but I asked these people a very simple question. What was it, somebody? Are you ready? And they were all like, yeah, let's go! Well, I want to ask you this morning. Are you ready? <laughs> I like one child in the back. <laughs> yeah, that's why I love the next generation. They don't know. I love that, man. She's like, yeah, let's go. And I've loved catching up with Pastor Trent's series over the last few weeks um, as I was prepping to be here. And the whole theme was, you know, how is it going to end? How, how's it all going to go down? And, 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 and I love that he just walked through the book of Revelation, giving you some information that will bring transformation into your life. But the truth of the matter is this. The question that now must be answered for us, whether this is your first time here, whether you're here at the campus in Maryville or maybe you're out there in, in Knoxville, um, here's the question. Are you ready? If Jesus showed back up today, are you ready? If, if you were to meet Jesus today, are you ready? Because one of two things will happen. Either one, Jesus will come back while you are alive or you will pass away and go to meet Jesus. It's true for every one of us. Last time I checked, stats hold true. One out of every one dies. Nobody wants to talk about it, but it's true. It's coming for you and me. And today, my only hope is very simply to do this, to help anyone in this room, watching online, at this campus, at our other campus. My only hope today is that you could walk out of these doors. You could step into your car. You could wake up on Monday ready. That, that you could walk out knowing that you know that you know because there is little in this life more tragic than to walk around fearful of what is to come. Because when you know that you are ready, then you can live for today. Or as some people say, when you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. So are you ready? I believe Jesus wanted us to be ready. He wanted you and I to be ready for the day where, where either he comes to us or, or, or we go to him. And, and if you have a Bible today, go ahead and open that up with me to Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter 24, open up your Bible, turn that bad boy on, whatever you got. And then secondly, let me just encourage you to do this. Like take notes today. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to take notes. Go, go ahead and let them know, right? Uh, uh, th th there are four things I want to share with you that will help you get ready. And here's the reason I want you to take notes on it. Because, because here's the deal. If you are ready, it now becomes your job and my job to help others get ready. And I believe today's message will be so simple. It, it, for some of you, it's going to be ding, ding, ding. Dude, that's amazing. That is simple. For some of you, it's going to be, oh my word. Now I know how to articulate this to my friends. Because all I want to do today is give you four simple symbols that will help you get ready. But let's see what Jesus said first. Matthew chapter 24, he said these words. But about that day or hour... No one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son of man, but only the father. You're like, what day, what hour? What are you talking about? Well, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the son of man. When the son of man, Jesus, comes back, look at what he says. For in the days before the flood, people were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, going to football. Oh, wait, that doesn't say that. Uh, and up to the day Noah entered the ark. 
And then he says, and, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. Look close. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the day, until the flood came and took them all away. Then look at what he says. And that is how it will be at the coming of the son of man. Don't miss this. Two men will be in the field. One will be snatched, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the meal. One will be taken, the other left. And then he goes on, he says, so therefore, keep watch. In other words, therefore, wake up. Therefore, get ready. Therefore, don't let this come upon you as a surprise. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know. Would y'all say that with me real quick? You do not know on what day your Lord will come. Um, speaking with students a lot, I, I like to, you know, <laughs> students are fun. Um, and, you know, everybody has a birth certificate. How many of y'all have a birth certificate? Okay, you have a birth date, right? And on your birth certificate, it gives your birth date. And I was talking to him one day. I said, hey, but you know what? If you flip that bad boy over, it gives you your death date. And, and students were like, for real? I'm like, no, not for real, all right? Um, I don't know if I'd want to know that or not. But the Bible says this, he says, you do not know on what day your Lord will come, but understand this, if the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let the house be broken into. And now check this out. Here's our warning. So you look at your neighbor and say, he's talking to you right now. Tell him right now, tell him, tell him. Uh, so, so you see, and here's what we do a lot of times. Some of you are sitting in here and you think I'm talking to someone else. But there's nobody in this room that the Lord does not have a word for today. And he's talking to you. And I want you to examine your life. And I want you to make sure that you are ready. Because moms, you can't get your kids ready. Kids, you can't get your brothers or sisters ready. Dads, you can't get your wife ready. Amen, we knew that, right? Like you can't get, this is one, you can't get, you also, come on, church, don't get, come on. I don't care if you're here in Knoxville or online. Say it with me, somebody. You what? Must what? Be what? Ready. Because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. So Jesus, today, I pray that you would get us ready. That we could walk out of this house with the confidence, even a greater confidence than those at the game last night had. When asked, are you ready? Lord, we could walk out and go, oh, I'm ready. Are you? In Jesus' name and everybody in the house said, amen. So here's the question. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you ready for Jesus to come back? And here's, honestly, some of us in the house are going, I don't know. Some of you are going, yes. Some of you are going, please, no. And, and all over the board are our replies. But I want you today to know that you can be ready. And I have one simple goal, and that's to get you ready. And I want to do this by showing you four very clear symbols. So if you're taking notes, you can write these down. If you're doing them on your phone, there are four emojis, and here they are. The four symbols, the heart, the division symbol, the cross, and the question mark. Just like road signs help you get to where you need to go, these four icons, these four images will help you and I know that we are ready to go, to know that we are ready for Jesus to show back up. We will know if we will look at these four icons. Now, the, the cool thing about this is, is I actually wear these uh, wristbands and I give them away all the time, but uh, I have these wristbands and on this wristband are these four symbols because I believe you can tell anyone, anywhere, anytime how they can get ready just by using these four symbols. And so if you are here, uh, I, I've done this like in a McDonald's drive through in, in about 10 seconds, I've shared how you can get ready. I, I've sat down on a restaurant and talked with someone for an hour about how you can get ready. In, in the next 25 minutes together, I'm gonna help you understand 
and be able to answer, are you ready? But listen, if you're sitting here right now, go, oh, I'm ready, bro. I'm ready. Then you need to write this down so that you can leverage this to help others get ready. So it begins with the heart. Now, the question is, what does the heart represent? Globally, everybody knows the answer to this. If you miss this, we need to chat. But if I asked you, hey, what does the heart represent? One simple word, you would say what? Love. Exactly. It represents love. And so when I'm talking to people about this message, I'll say something like this. Hey, um, can I share with you a message that'll change your life? This morning, I would say, hey, can I share with you a message that will make sure that you are ready to either die and meet Jesus or you are ready if you're alive and Jesus comes back and it all begins with the heart. And I'd say, what do you think the heart represents? They always say what? That was pretty weak. Let's try it again. They always say what? Love, and I answer back like this. You're exactly right. And you know what the Bible says? Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, God is love. For you and I to get ready, we have to understand we must first do business and understand and grasp there is a God. Now, let me just say, if there's not a God, we're all wasting our time. Peace, let's go home and watch the Cowboys play. Oh, wait, I'm in Tennessee. Never mind. Watch the Titans play, all right? Um, let's just do something different. But the fact of the matter is this, is that there is a God, and the heart represents the reality that all of us have been made by God. What does the Bible say? In the beginning, what's that next word? In the beginning, God. God made the heavens and the earth. And so I want you to know this morning that this message is important. And in order for you to get ready, you've got to understand that there is a God and there is a God that number one made you. In other words, I want you to grasp this. You ain't no accident. You're, you're not a mistake. You did not just happen to show up after trillions of years of evolution. In other words, you did not come from. Now, if you know anything about evolutionary science, that's what they say. It all began with the. But that's not where you and I came from. The Bible says this in Psalm 139. I praise you, God, for I am fearfully and wonderfully what made God shaped you God formed you God made you God created you God knit you together in your mother's womb look at someone right now in this house and tell them this eyeball to eyeball face to face somebody needs somebody showed up for this news this morning just tell them this you ain't no mistake tell them right now please you ain't no mistake God intended you God shaped you. God fashioned you and formed you. And when he did it, he didn't say, whoops. He didn't mess up. God made you. And the psalmist said, this is what really sets it all off. That there is a God who made me, created me. I'm created on purpose and for a purpose. My life has meaning and value and worth. I am made by God. But secondly, I'm loved by God. See, God didn't just make you, God loves you. And, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. And I know what some people are thinking. They're like, Ryan, you're obviously from out of town and don't know me because there's no way God loves me. And I want to tell you, he absolutely loves you. John 3, 16, one of the most famous verses in all of the Bible simply says this, for, say it with me, do you know it? God so loved the world. Look at your neighbor and just tell them this, God loves you. Tell them that right now, please, right? God loves, you know, I like it when people do that because y'all are smiling all of a sudden. Y'all are like, yeah. Like nobody, nobody, if somebody looks at you and says, God loves you. No, no, dude, God loves you. 
This is crazy because I know me in their days. I don't love me. Amen, somebody, all right? But God loves you. God made you. God, God created you for relationship with him. He loves you. But this third one, man, it really gets interesting because he says not only that God made you and that God loves you, but God, say it, somebody, wants you. Whew. He wants Hey, he wants you. Think about that from God wants you. You're like, man, I ain't never been wanted in my whole life. As a matter of fact, some of you grew up and here's what your parents have told you your whole life. You were not planned. And I want to say something to you this morning from the God who made you, from the God who loves you, from the God who wants you. Listen to me close. You absolutely were planned. You were not a mistake. That God intended you. God created you and God wants you. Second Peter 3, 9 would say that God is not slow in keeping his promises. Some people consider slowness, but he's patient with us. Can somebody be thankful for the patience of God? He's patient with us. Listen, not wanting anyone to perish, but all. Look at your neighbor and say, that's you. Go ahead, tell him. But all all to come to repentance. God made you. God loves you. And God wants you. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, Ryan, that sounds really good. That, that sounds cool. Okay, you got a couple of verses to prop up your statements. But Ryan, I sure don't feel like that. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting here and I feel isolated and I, I feel alone. I, I feel like I have no hope. As a matter of fact, I only showed up today to give God one more shout out. I only showed up today because a friend told me there's going to be pies. Amen. I, mean, I showed up today and, and I'm just telling you, Ryan, I don't know if I buy that there's a God who made me and loves me and wants me because, Ryan, my life is a living hell. So what's up with that, Ryan? Oh, there's a second symbol. Not just the heart, but there's a division symbol. And I would say to anyone like that today in this room or at our other campus, I would tell you right now, this right now, you're right. There is a problem. Something is wrong. You don't have to scroll TikTok very long. You don't have to watch the news very long. You don't have to jump on the gram very long. You don't have to be around people very long to know that the world has gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, amen? I mean, something's wrong, something's broken, something's shattered. That's right, because yes, there is a God who made you and loves you and wants you, but there is a big problem between you and I, between you, I mean, between you and God, and that is this, the word sin. And you know what letters in the middle of sin? You don't have to guess, it's right there, it's pretty easy. What is it? Oh, and guess what the problem is? I'm the. Pr Some of you are like, no, 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 Ryan, I'm not the problem. She's the problem. No, 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 Ryan, I'm not the problem. These kids, they're the problem. No, 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 Ryan, I'm not the problem. They're the problem. Washington's the problem. The schools are the problem. The governor's the problem. The mayor's the problem. <laughs> I'm not saying that there's not problems in all of that. But the real problem is not out there. The real problem is in here. It's called sin. And sin divides, separates you and me and you and God. Here's the deal with sin. Sin infects us all. None of us miss it. The Bible says this, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, God says don't and, and we do. God says do. We don't. God says, go here and we stay. God says, stay here and, and we go. We read the Bible. And the thing about the Bible is it's like they're reading our mail. And you're like, bro, I, I resonate with Adam and Eve. God said, you can have it all except for this one tree. And guess what we want? 
Y'all don't act like you don't. Guess what we want? We want the, we want the one tree, right? The one that we shouldn't have, the one that we can't. I want that one. What is that? It's sin. And all of us have gone too far. All of us have not gone far enough. All of us have seen the target and missed the mark. Sin infects us all. And so in light of that, sin separates you. Yes, there is a God who made you and loves you and wants you. So what's the problem, Ryan? We're the problem. We rebel. We run. Isaiah would say it like this. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way. And in light of that, Isaiah 59, 2 says that our sin separates us in God. The God who made us, the God who loves us, the God who wants us. We said, thanks, God, but no thanks. So we run, we rebel, we sin. And so now there's a God up top and us down low, but there's a barrier between us. And what's the barrier? It's sin. And what does sin ultimately do? If undealt with, sin infects you, separates you, but ultimately sin, nobody wants to say it but it kills you. You ever heard somebody say this? I just feel dead inside. Why is that? Because that's what sin does. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That what we deserve because of our rebellion is death. What is death? It's separation from life. Who is life? It's God, the God who made us and loves us and wants us. But we have sinned, we have rebelled, we have run. So yes, God loves you, but sin separates you. And that's why in this room and online and you watching in Knoxville, that's why some of you right now, you just feel dead. Can I be honest? Oh yeah, the pulse is beating. (sighs) The lungs are working. But in our rebellion, we are dead. And I know some of you are going, hey, Pastor Trent, could you not have that guy back? This is not fun. And you're sitting here going, man, why did I show up for this? I just wanted pie. And now he's telling me I'm dead, I'm a sinner, and I'm separated from God. I like that God loves you. Can we get back to that? Well, that takes us to the third symbol, right? Here it is. God loves you. God made you. God wants you. That's good news, yes? That's not a trick question. That's good news, yes? yes? But sin separates you. Sin infects you, and sin has killed you. That's bad news, yes? But there is hope. And hope has a name, and his name is Jesus. And this is what the cross represents. It's Jesus. In Jesus, there is life. In Jesus, there is hope. In Jesus, there is restoration. In Jesus, there is reconciliation. In Jesus, there is forgiveness. In Jesus, there is hope. In Jesus. What did Jesus, like, Ryan, what does Jesus have to do with anything? Well, number one, Jesus came for you. In Texas, we like to use the word y'all. Do y'all use y'all around here? Like we drop a y'all anywhere, right? And so we'd say it like this, that, 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 that Jesus came for all y'all, right? And that's true. But I want, I want you to know this. Jesus didn't just come for all y'all. He came for you and you and you and you, sir, and you, ma'am. He came for you. I love the way Paul said it. He said this in 1 Timothy 1.15. This is a trustworthy saying, deserving of full acceptance. In other words, you better write this down. Here's what he says. It's a trustworthy saying, deserving of full acceptance. Listen, Christ Jesus came into the world to save the good kids. Now, is that what he said? It's not what he said at all. <laughs> Some of you are like, whew, because I was like, man, that's not me. It doesn't say that Christ Jesus came into the world to save the good people, the nice people, the kind people. No, who did Christ Jesus come into the world? Listen, this is a trustworthy saying, deserving of full acceptance. Don't miss this. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 
Look at your neighbor right now and say, mm-hmm, that's you. Go and tell them right now, mm-hmm, that's, that's you. That's good news. He didn't come to save the good guys because there aren't no good guys. He came to save sinners. He came for you and he died for you. You're like, Ryan, you tell me God loves me. God made me and God wants me. Then why am I over here? Then what has God done for me? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Romans 5, 8 says that God demonstrates his own love for you. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, Jesus didn't look at you and go, get your crap together and then I'll die for you. But that's what we like to say sometimes. Hey, clean yourself up and God will love you. No, no, here's what happened. While we were still sinners, rebelling from God, running from God, God came running after us and Jesus on the cross died to death. You and I should have died to bridge the gap we can never bridge. That's why he says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And so he says, I came for you. I died for you. But, but let's not leave Jesus in the grave because he ain't there. Because on the third day, come on somebody, what'd he do? He rose from the dead. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is alive. Tell him right now, Jesus is alive. And he wants to give you life, yes. Yes, absolutely, the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. See, Jesus changes everything. He brings dead people to life. He brings people in darkness to light. He brings those separated from God into relationship with God. He is the ultimate life changer. Jesus changes everything. And so, are you ready? Are you? Are you ready? Let's look again at these four symbols because there's one more. The heart. God made you. God made loves you. God wants you. That's not the question. Sin, sin infects you. Sin separates you. Sin has killed you. That's not the question. Jesus came. Jesus died. Jesus rose again. That's not the question. So Ryan, what's the question? Are you ready? In other words, there is a decision that must be made by you. Here's the decision. What will you do with Jesus? Everything hinges on that. What will you do with Jesus? Not, hey, will you go to church and try to be better? Not, hey, will you get baptized and maybe the water will wash it off? Hey, not, will you stop cussing and clean your mouth up? No, not, hey, will you stop cheating around on your wife and just, just be faithful? No, no, it's not in you cleaning yourself up. It's in what will you do with Jesus? Because when you get right with Jesus, all that stuff begins to get cleaned up. The decision is this, what will you do with Jesus? Will you come to Jesus? I love what Revelation 3.20 says. Check this out. Behold, I stand at the door and what somebody and? Not, now let me ask you a question. I don't know you, you don't know me. If I show up at your house, can I just walk right into your house? Hey, in Texas, I don't know about here, but I get you shot, just saying. Like that's not a good idea, right? Now can I just knock and then walk in? No, bro, that'll get you. Jesus says, listen, I'm standing at the door of your life. I love this picture and I'm, I'm knocking. And so in order for something to happen, you got to hear it. And that's where some of you are right now. You're hearing. It's not a literal knock, but you, 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 well, you just feel this pull. You're like, like I, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. 
Like, like there's a God who made me and loves me and wants me. Man, I know I've sinned and rebelled and I'm dead in my sin, but Jesus came to, to, to pay it all. Jesus came, he died to death. He, he gave his life and now he's offering me life. Like you feel this, you're like, oh, there's hope. I, there, I can be ready. If you hear his voice, oh, and what? And say it, somebody, and opens the door. Look at the promise from Jesus. Oh, so good. Say it with me. I, I said, say it with me. I, I said, say it with me. I will come in to him. Are you going to leave Jesus outside? Or will today be the day that you hear the voice? You open the door of your life and you just simply say something like this, Jesus, come in. Jesus, I'm yours. Will you come to Jesus? Secondly, will you confess Jesus as Lord? You're like, Ryan, how do I invite him in? Well, in Romans 10, 9, it simply says it like this. I like to make things clean, plain. Just I like to put them, the cookies on the bottom shelf so we can all get them, including me. You know what I'm saying? Here's what he says. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. If you come to the place today where you said, Jesus, I'm tired of being boss of my own life. I'm tired of being Lord of my own life. I'm tired of doing my own thing, going my own way. Jesus, I need you to take over. You confess him as Lord, believe in your heart. God raised him from the dead. Jesus, I believe you're alive. Come in and live inside of me. What's his promise? Say it with me, somebody. Four words. You, what, will, what, be, what? Are you ready? You're like, yeah, I'm ready. You're like, Ryan, how do you know you're ready? Um, because it's not on my words, it's on his word. It's not dependent on my faithfulness, it's his faithfulness. The song we sang earlier, great is your faithfulness. Oh God, to me, I'm thankful that me being ready has nothing to do with my faithfulness, but it has everything to do with his faithfulness. And if I come and if I confess and if I believe, man, I will be saved. So will you come to Jesus? Will you confess Jesus as Lord? And the best way I know how to say it is this, will you call to Jesus today? Not tomorrow, not some other time, today. God is knocking today. He's wanting in today. He wants you to know today. He's ready for you to be ready. By the way, Jesus has been ready for you for 2,000 years. Jesus has been ready for you from the beginning because on the cross, here's what he said, to tell us die. It is finished. And all you and I can do now is call to Jesus. Romans 10, 13, one of my favorite passages simply says this, everyone Look at your neighbor and say, even me. Tell him right now, even me. Everyone, anyone, no matter what you've done, no matter what's been done to you, no matter where you've been, no matter where you've gone, no matter what line you've crossed, no matter what sin you've committed, no matter where you are, no matter how you identify, Jesus has come to give you a new identity. Everyone who what? I'm a dad, I got three kids. There's a lot of people that call my phone that I don't answer. I know I'm the only one who, who hits that red button. I know, I get it. But when my kids call, guess what I do? I answer, I hit that green button. Why? Because I'm, I'm their dad. You know, you know what your heavenly father's waiting on today? He's waiting on you to call. That's all. You're like, Ryan, what I gotta do to get forgiven? Come to Jesus. What I gotta do to be ready? Come to Jesus. Ryan, what do I have to do? It's already done. The gift is available. All you can do is receive it. So call on the name of the Lord. And when you call on the name of the Lord, look at the promise again. I don't know how to tell you this enough. When you call on the name of the Lord, say it somebody, you what? Will. Say it again, you 
will, say it loud, church, for somebody who doesn't believe it yet. You will, what, be, what, saved. Is that good news or what? Then that'll change everything. And that's what you can have today. What, what, are the, what are the four symbols? Oh, oh, here they are. The heart. God made you, loves you, and wants you. But there is a problem. You and I, we're the problem. We have sinned, and sin infects us, separates us, and it's killing us. But there's hope. Hope has a name. <laughs> His name is Jesus. He came, he died, he rose again, and he'll give you life today. He'll adopt you into the family today. He'll sign the documents today. He is ready to receive you today. And all you have to do is come, confess, and call out to Jesus. So would you bow your heads right where you are this morning? Whether you're right here in Maryville or you're over in Knoxville, you're watching online. Hey, right where you are, would you just bow your heads? I wonder how many who are listening to the sound of my voice today would say, Ryan, that's me. I am not ready, but I am ready to be ready. Ryan, would you pray for me? If that's you in the house today, whether you're online watching, whether you're in Knoxville or right here in Mary, if that's you today, you say, Ryan, I'm ready for Jesus. I want Jesus. I need Jesus. Ryan, would you pray for me, bro? That's me. If that's you in the house, would you just raise your hand up high right now? I'm not going to come to you. Not going to get you. I just want to pray for you. Hold your hand up high all over this place so I can see you. Awesome. Hold up high. High so I can see you. Awesome. I see you way up there. Awesome. I see you down here. Say, Ryan, pray for me, man. I'm ready to be ready. Pray for me. Awesome. Thank you. Someone else, just hold it right up. I'm not coming to get you. I just want to pray for you right now. Ryan, I'm ready to be ready. Lord, right now, I want to pray for every one of these who have their hands up in this room. Thank you for knocking. Thankful today, God, they hear you. And just like I was at 18 years old, I realized I need Jesus. I want Jesus. And today, Lord, they realize that. And so I pray right now that as you gave them faith to raise their hand, God, you give them faith to invite you in. Hey, so right now, whether you raised your hand or not, if you say, Ryan, I'm ready to be ready, here's how you get ready. You get Jesus. And how do you get Jesus? You invite him in to be king of your life and Lord of your life. You surrender all that you know of you to all that you know of him. And I wanna help you do that right now. So as you sit in this room or at our other campus or online, please, if you want Jesus to move in, you just gotta ask him. And so maybe you'd ask him something like this. Just tell him this, Jesus, right now where you are, just say, dear Jesus. All over this room, just say, dear Jesus, I believe you are Lord. Just say it, I believe you are God. I believe you are King. And right where you sit, just say, Jesus. Say, these are powerful words right here. I want you. Tell him, I want you to be my King, my Lord, my God. Just tell him right now, Jesus, I believe you are alive. And I want you, they're the words, I want you to live in me, to save me, to be my Lord. Jesus, just tell him right where you are, I'm yours, I'm yours. With your head still bowed, I just wanna know how I can celebrate with you. Our pastors are watching at the other campus, but nobody else should be just looking around. If today in this room or at our other campus or even online, you say, Ryan, I invited Jesus in today and I'm not ashamed about it. Would you just slip your hand right up and right down? We just wanna praise God for you. Would you slip your hand and say, Ryan, I did that today. I invited Christ in as King today. Ryan, I trusted Jesus as Lord today. Awesome. Hold it up high so I can see you. Awesome, thank you. Others, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate that. 
God, you see these hands, but more importantly, you know these hearts. Whew. God, you are good. You are so good. Would everybody just look at me now all across the campuses and online and right here in the room? Hey, if today, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna, like, like we love to celebrate life change. And we've got some of our section leaders around there in white shirts, you see them down here and the, the other campus, listen. Here's what I'd love for you to do in just a moment, simple instructions. We're all gonna stand. The band's gonna lead us in just a song of praise and worship, amen? Isn't he worthy of all worship? Man, we're gonna worship in this house. And when we stand to sing, here's what I'd love for you to do. Whether you're a child who just said, man, Jesus, I want you to be my king. Whether you're a grown man up in the house who just said, Jesus, save me. Whether you're a mom who walk, walked in broken and hurting and, and, and alone and you said, Jesus has saved me today. Here's what I'd love for you to do. When we stand to sing, I just want you to step out from wherever you are and go to one of our section leaders. There, here's all we want to do. We want to help you take that next step. Understand what happened. Take that next step and begin to grow. We wanna help you begin to grow. And listen, maybe you're a little nervous to walk by yourself. I promise you this, if you're in this house and today Jesus saved you, hey, and you need somebody to go with you, the person sitting right beside you will go with you, won't you? Amen? Look at somebody beside you right now and go and tell them, I'll go with you. Tell them right now, right now, tell them. I'll go with you, tell them, tell them. Both sides, don't just, don't leave anybody. I'll go with you. Right, hey. Hey, Knoxville, tell them, I'll go with you. So here's the deal. I'm gonna pray, we're gonna stand, we're gonna sing. And we wanna celebrate with you guys and ladies who today said, Jesus, I'm not ready, but I'm ready to be ready. Come in. So Lord, thank you. Thank you that you made a clear path for us to get ready. Thank you that we can be more excited, more amped up, more confident than the Tennessee volunteer fans. God, somebody ask us, are we ready? We can say, I'm ready. I'm ready because Jesus is my King. We love you, Jesus. We worship you now. In your mighty name we pray. And everybody in the house said, amen. Would you stand up right now? As you stand up, would you begin to step out? If you trusted Jesus today, you wanna talk to someone else about next steps, just step out right where you are. Ask a friend to come with you. Our section leaders are waiting for you right now. As we sing, you step out and you come. Thank you so much for watching this video. We'd love for you to like the video and leave a comment. And we also encourage you to subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a post from Foothills Church. To learn more about FC, just head to our website by going to foothillschurch.com or by clicking the link in the description below.